And India has landed on the moon and Indians are over the moon. With the Chandrayaan-3 mission success, India has become the first country to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. And fresh updates, in Chandrayaan-3's moon mission, the Pragyan rover has been deployed onto the lunar surface. To talk more on this, uh, we are now being joined by Tapan Mishra, former director of SAC and PRL ISRO as well. Thank you so much for joining us on We On, sir. Good evening. Good, good afternoon. Yes, Right, good afternoon, go ahead. Sir. sir, it is a major feat for India and ISRO, and now that the Pragyan rover has been deployed, what kind of elements are we expecting to discover? Yes, there are, that particular area is a replete with a, a rich minerals on the surface. They are basically titanium, aluminum, zinc, and they, they are there available. And they all, obviously silicon also in scientific order form. And more importantly, probably the water is hidden below, not as a just a flowing water, but as a dirty ice in a slightly below the regolith, it may be there. Right, sir. Now, Chandrayaan 1 had detected water on the moon, which was a major global discovery. Is there anything that Chandrayaan 3 is looking at specifically? Yes. See, in Chandrayaan 1, what we detected it is detected by the remote sensing. That is, from the far, we have seen the water. But you know, even on the uh, surface, uh, on Earth, you know, there. It, sometimes the mirage is also mistaken as a water. So, so the scientists would like to believe what they have seen through from a distance as from spectral analysis. They want to verify physically whether it is there or not. So that is the goal of this Pragan rover, to verify whether it is possible to see. Uh, that area is a uh, 300 kilometer from the South Pole. It's a very cold area. So whatever water may be there on the surface of the uh, regolith, it must be at a form of a called a dirty ice. That is a uh, ice mixed with a uh, dust. Right, sir. Also talk to us about what makes South Pole and the areas near the South Pole so attractive for exploration. Oh yes, there is two uh, two reasons. You know that uh, you know, they say they. You see, there is a already an understanding that uh, if you want to really that the moon, conquering moon, as we have done for last 60 years. But uh, if you want to go to other planets, because that is a natural, because the human civilization has to be expanded to other planets, it may not be today, but it may be some 100 years, 200 years or later, then you should be able to build rockets on moon. The advantage of moon is it has a one-sixth of the gravity on the Earth. So if I want to send a rocket from Earth, whatever, say, I to, to send to Mars, I had a 60,000 ton rocket has to be built, sent from Earth. But if I, for the same performance, I can send a 10,000 ton rocket from uh, surface of the moon. It's a roughly the number. So the actual numbers will differ. So there is a huge mass advantage having a rocket base in moon and sending people from there for uh, other planets. It is a moon should be used as a stopgap uh, arrangement. Right. But the problem right. is that today, you know, human being cannot stay and build things. So you should be able to mine there and build the rocket. So the basic requirement is that the there should be minerals should be existing and on the surface not very deep and water should be existing. That is what you can build the rocket or not. Obviously building rocket human being will not go. It will the robots which will go and build rockets and all. But if a water is there that can be converted to hydrogen and oxygen and that can be used as a fuel. That is a easy to do it. Now, this is a, what appears to be science fiction today will be a reality. In, it may not be even a, 
within 50 years you can have such a scenario there the way the science is progressing and uh, so there is a very urgent rush to go to the south south pole and and also the south pole is always visible from the earth so the communication becomes easier so unlike the dark side at the north pole this side is a visible more clearly from earth Mm. So you will see that uh, there is a number of attempts. Israelis attempted, Japanese people attempted, we attempted, and uh, of late, right. uh, Russians attempted and all. But uh, we could succeed this time, though, though it is the second time, but uh, of all the countries, we are the first set of people to reach Absolutely, Absolutely. I was just coming to that, that India's successful Chandrayaan-3 landing on the moon, soft landing on the moon, uh, comes days after uh, Russia's Luna 25 mission, which uh, clearly failed. And uh, I mean, the Chandrayaan, it landed like a feather on the moon. It, it was that soft landing. Talk to us as to what makes the lunar landing so challenging. Yes, you see, that uh, if you... If you get ejected from aircraft or jump from the helicopter on, on Earth, mm -hmm. you have an advantage, you have an atmosphere. So you have a, if you know how the parachutes, then you can glide through the atmosphere and then reach the surface slowly without injuring your bone or any other organ. But you know, such atmosphere is not there on the moon. The pressure is only 10 to the power minus 8 of atmospheric pressure on Earth. And uh, in this situation, anything you throw, it will fall, and by gravity, it will accelerate and hit the Earth. Right. So the first requirement is to, it has to be slowed down. You know, whether a vehicle I send or a, any person I send, first the is descent to the moon has to be slowed down. So, and this slow down, in the absence of atmosphere, you cannot use parachutes. So you have to use rockets, which will be fired downwards, so that the, you are given a thrust upwards. So that the, as and when you acquire velocity, you are also proportionally compensated, so that the, your downward descent is a very slow speed and smooth, and when you reach the surface, you do not injure or you do not make any damage to your vehicle or if a human being is there, do not make a damage to them. That Absolutely, is why sir. it is needed there. Right, so my, my last question to you, how do you see this remarkable feed by India making way for further space exploration projects and missions in times to come? Yes. You see, one, you know, one, obviously one hidden agenda is there, they like Antarctica, it is a no man's land. But whichever country reaches there, he declares that is a part of India. Like, you know, in Antarctica, in Mrs. Indira Gandhi's time, our former prime minister sent a science, scientist to Antarctica, and we established the Gangotri stations there. Yeah. So that is a become an extension of India. But you see, it will so happen in future when there will be big necessity for inter planetary travel, then there will be demand for demarcation of land and resources on moon. And that natural treaty agreement will be like an Antarctic treaty. I hope so, that whoever reached whichever part, they will take a claim to this. So what you see, apart from the scientific field, it is also preparing for the future. That is one part of the story. The other part is obviously we have to build stations there if we have to plan and obviously as and when the India becomes superpower and becomes stronger and all we need to keep our civilization alive for next 5000 years. And like other civilizations if they want to expand to other planets we have to expand there. Now it may look a very futuristic, it may look to be a totally science fiction but just remember even to go into India was a fiction even in 1492. Columbus went to search for India and ended up wrongly in America. Yeah. And the whole history of Earth, history of Earth has been changed drastically. 
Just imagine, yet we would have, we would have discovered America, the whatever history or what is the present day, what we are seeing today, would have been different than what we are seeing now. Similarly, in future, if a planetary mission we do not participate or we do not ship there, we may be left behind on Earth when other civilizations will be going to other planets and conquering spaces and expanding themselves as a race. Right, absolutely, sir. Quite a remarkable feat for India. Thank you so much for joining us on Raw and sharing insights on this story. Thank you very much.